This is John Black, Super Chemist. Another easy, simple video uh, showing how to get anhydrous calcium chloride. Now, this is not a pure pure product. Uh, this is what the MSDS says on damp red. As you can see, the percentages don't add up really. I mean, it could be 60 and 5 and 5 and 70, uh, you know what I mean? Anyways, I don't really use this to try to have a pure calcium chloride. The only thing you can use it for is a desiccator. So I don't really care about the other, like these salts. They're probably anhydrous too, and we'll soak up water. So, But the main thing that you can use it for is, uh, since it's anhydrous, because its whole purpose is to absorb water, you know, damp rid, uh, moisture absorber. So that's its job. And uh, basically, this is used as a drying agent. I use magnesium sulfate a lot of times, but uh, this is a good good drying agent too. And sometimes you have to use this one uh, because the magnesium sulfate will react. Uh, so th this is a good thing to have. Uh, remember, before you use any drying agent, make sure that it doesn't react with the, what you're putting it in to where there's going to be a fire or an explosion. Make sure it doesn't react. Um, I don't use much of it, but I have a bag. Always remember, though, fragrance-free. Do not get any bags. That are, this goes for any chemical you buy. You don't want to be getting anything. You don't want to be getting anything that... Uh, you know, has fragrances. That just means they added some more contaminant into it. And the less contaminants, the better it is. Um, I don't know if you can just heat it up in the oven. It might, uh, it might uh, decompose if you heat it. And this also forms a complex with uh, uh, alcohols. Uh, so, or lower, you know, not big alcohols, but the lower ones definitely, like ethanol, methanol. Uh, so, if you have trace amounts of alcohol in something, you can throw this in and see if it it uh, reacts with it. Now, I, I, the reason I found out about this is I was uh, using this to uh, dry something, and it had some alcohol in it. And when I threw it in, instead of it getting, like, crystals usually the powder will turn into like a crystalline substance when it incorporates the uh, water molecule or whatever molecule into the uh, crystal lattice but when i threw this in uh, it reacted with the water and it complexed again but it looked uh, more like a phlegm like someone spit a hawker into my my stuff that i was trying to dry and uh so anyway it's just a little fyi Got me a drying tube here. Basically, I usually use calcium chloride because I like how it comes in flakes. Which you'll see here in a second. I saved this tube after an experiment. And basically, I'm going to put it... Now, so we have three things we can use this for. One is to dry out organic solvents. You can throw this calcium chloride in. It'll soak up any trace amounts of water, and then you can filter it out, and you can distill your stuff just to make sure that you have all the salts out. Number two, you can make a co coordination complex with um, alcohols, mainly small alcohols, uh, that way they turn into a solid. You can filter them out. Uh, and last but not least is when you're doing a reaction that needs to be dry. You can put a drying tube on uh, like I just showed you a couple seconds ago. And you put that in series with the outlet of your system. And that way any air that gets in will have to travel through the calcium chloride and will be dried before it hits the reaction and messes it up. Another thing that calcium chloride damperate is good for is um, it's a source of calcium for calcium salts. 
Um, so if you take your calcium chloride and you mix it with some sodium hydroxide, remember we make chromium hydroxide this way. What will happen is the calcium hydroxide precips out and the sodium chloride stays in solution, right? And then you can mix that with any acid you want to make your salt. You know what I mean? If you want a sulfate salt, you put it in sulfuric acid. You want a chloride salt, you put it in chloric acid, hydrochloric acid. You want a nitrate salt, you put it in nitric acid. Now, I don't know if these are stoichiometrically correct or whatever. I just did this real quick just to give you the gist that it's a, how it's a source of calcium salts. You know what I mean? You make your hydroxide and then you can just an acid base reaction. What's an acid in the base make? It makes salt water, right? You get the metal from one, you get the anion from the other one, and that makes your salt. And of course, an acid has a hydrogen in it, and a base has a hydroxyl, an OH, right? Hydroxide. That makes your water, salt water. So it's a source of calcium salts also. Can you make a stuff anhydrous? Supposedly, some people say you can. I've never tried it. Um, it's too cheap for me. I don't use it that often. Uh, so, I, you know, it doesn't matter. But I, um, you, I hear that if you can do it, it's very hard to drive the water off. It's very tough. And always remember, science is great.